Hi everyone and welcome back to The Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem and just lately I have really been enjoying myself doing some simple studies of tropical flowers. We did our Birds of Paradise painting which I was using to test out the artful watercolours and I've also done a few in my sketchbook in pencil as well. So today I thought I would share with you a simple painting that you can try maybe if you're new to watercolour or like me maybe you just don't have a lot of time to paint but you still want to get that nice painty fun in. So because of that and with that in mind I am using the Winsor & Newton Cotman watercolours today. These are the Winsor & Newton student grade paints so they're relatively affordable and you do not need a palette this size. This is the studio set um, which is the biggest set that they do. And this just happens to be what I have. But we're only going to be using a couple of colours and none of them are particularly exotic, unlike our flowers. So you don't have to have a huge collection of watercolours in order to paint like this. Now this has kind of come at, at an opportune time for me as well and I didn't do this on purpose. I was going to do one of these in my little Arteza watercolour sketchbook. Again, this is a really, really inexpensive little sketchbook. The paper's not brilliant, but for the sake of doing nice, simple paintings, it's really great and I, I quite enjoy it. But I've also ordered one of these from Sea White of Brighton and it's postcard watercolour paper. So it is a proper postcard on the back and we obviously have this nice cold pressed texture on the front so I thought I could use that here too and kind of make it um make this the guinea pig video for it and if this paper's substantial and I like it I might start stocking this in the stash shop on a regular basis this is 350 gsm paper and it's handmade so it'll be quite interesting to see how paint behaves on that so I thought first of all what we could do, here was the last one I did which is the aloe vera flower. So this is the kind of thing we're going for, really simple and clean and just to have a good bit of fun and a bit of practice with your watercolours. Okay so we're going to start off with these African violet flowers. These are really simple, really easy and really fun to do and it's a lovely starting point if you're not used to using watercolour. So we're going to try this on my, on my guinea pig paper. And this is, it's so simple and straightforward, but it's such good fun. I had great fun doing that in my sketchbook, so we're going to do the same here. So all you have to do in terms of sketching out, you just have to decide how many flowers you want and how much they're going to overlap. And all we need to do is we need to create a centre for some of these flowers. So that's just lots of little circles. So the petal structure is basically, they're sort of oval shaped, but they've got crinkly edges. So... If, even if you just have a rough outline of where you want those petals to be or what size you want them to be and then you can add in another however many you would like to add in. I always say that three is the magic number. Extra cave points if you can reference the artist. And I don't mean the artist. <laughs> so just, just really, really, really loose rough shapes because this doesn't really need to do anything spectacular because it's just not a requirement and that's the fun. Artwork doesn't always have to be really intricate and it doesn't always have to be masterpieces especially if you're in your sketchbook like enjoy it have a bit of fun with it. So the starting point is taking our number two brush and we want a damp brush and we're going to pick up uh, a cadmium yellow is usually a good colour it's the colour that most people have but we want it up, like almost neat paint so no dilution if you can help it and then what we're going to do is we're going to put in the little middle parts of our flowers and that is literally just some yellow dots and uh, have a little bit of space between them use that negative space to show the shape so nice rich paint as rich as you can get it without it you know not sticking to your brush. So I've got three little flowers here and that is all you need to do for that. So we're going to stick with our number two and we want to have a blue colour and a purple colour. So if you don't have a purple colour you can mix pink and blue, that'll give you a nice purple colour. So I think I'm going to use cobalt blue here and I've also got a dioxazine purple so that'll do it for me quite happily. So I'll start with the cobalt blue and I'm going to work fairly quickly here and I'm just going to fill in one of my petals. Just encourage that colour to come down. And when you get near your little yellow circles, if you start flicking and leave a white space when you get close to it. And then what I'm going to do is just work my way down. So I'm going to grab some of my dioxazine purple this time. I am going to dilute this down because it's a very intense colour and I want this colour to be quite delicate. So again, and with a pipette or even just with your brush, add in some water. And then I'm going to start on this one and you will see it will start to bleed in next door 
and if you want to pop your brush in there and help it along that's fine and then these flicks in towards that white area that we just talked about as well I have to stop this one here because this is overlapping or under underlapping Underla <laughs> underlapping and then we want to go back to our blue and I don't even clean my brush a lot of the time I just go straight in and again we'll put these flicks in so I'm, I'm kind of purpley a purpley bluey colour now now I've got quite a harsh line here and obviously this has started to dry so with a bit more water on my brush I'm just going to wet that kind of lift that line a little bit and then grab some of my purple get my flicky lines in and then just join it up with the other one and there we've got our first little pretty flower okay so let's start down the bottom with this one flick my lines in first and then switch over and then I'm going to grab some blue here just make that a bit richer and maybe I'll stop halfway through this petal and go back into my purple because why not and this is what I'm saying about this it should be fun it should be relaxing maybe plunk a bit more purple in there and then grab some blue here and obviously purple and blue sit side by side on the color chart so they, they are going to they are going to go fine together you know you don't have to worry about picking colors and obviously nature has done that all by itself because nature's clever so over here if we start in here I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap there just to separate out these two flowers a little bit so I have to say I'm not having any problems with the paper the the paint's traveling well on it which is great that's what we want um so I think I'll probably have to do a little bit more investigation but on a, just a first a first feel I think this paper's pretty good quality and I would be happy to to stock this in the shop I do actually have quite a lot of postcard watercolour paper and I think it's the size of it that appeals to me because I'm always really pushed for time if I'm not doing art for a specific purpose you know I very rarely have time just to to do it because I like to do it and uh, the postcard size is great and it actually has a purpose you know you could send it to someone after you're finished heaven forbid so that really appeals to me as well but I am quite enjoying what's going on here and I like how the paint's mixing together on the paper I say we're not on fancy paints these are student grade paints they come in tube form and they come in pan form obviously I've got the studio set here I prefer working with pans than tubes um, I just find them easier to work with in fact I, th I think I've actually got tubes of Cotman paint in the stash shop um, so yeah there you go you, it comes in tubes <laughs> it's just not not something I favour personally but everyone's different and that is some simple little African violets just for you to play about with and just enjoy your paint enjoy your watercolour paint so we'll shift over now and we're going to do something a bit more complicated and I'm going to jump into my little Arteza watercolour sketchbook for that so I've got a little bulldog clip here just to keep this page out of the way because I'm left handed I'm using the Sea White synthetic brushes some of you will know that I favour these brushes they're inexpensive, they're fully synthetic bristles that are on them and they do a great job, uh, I seem to be quite taken with them I do also sell these in the stash shop if you fancy getting some of your own so I've got a number 2 and a number 6, that's all, all we need so no complicated supplies, as long as we've got some water some paint we're off so thinking about the size of the sheet of paper that we're working on to fit in the entire plant with the flowers going to be a bit of a crush and these flowers have got such an interesting shape and we want to incorporate as much of that detail of the actual flower because it's really interesting and also it's really pretty as well so just with a normal pencil it doesn't matter what type of pencil an HB pencil's fine or a number two if you're in the States all the same thing and we want to sketch out this shape now a lot of the time when I'm painting flowers, especially when I'm doing simple paintings, I don't do an under sketch but I think it's quite important here for me to make sure I know where the parts that are tucked in behind are and where the ones that aren't. So they do have quite a simple shape, as you would imagine they're shaped like a trumpet, imagine that. So basically it's like an isosceles triangle. Um, we want to keep these relatively centred and then at the end they kind of flare out and they've got these little points on them and this is the, the the edge of the petals now of course you can go if you don't have these in your garden and if you live in parts of the world where I live uh, you can look up some reference images on Google 
I'm working from three or four different references here and obviously I can't show you those pictures because copyright and all the rest of it. But it's relatively easy to find if you if you have a, a quick Google for it. And if you're only doing it for practice like this, it's not it's not a big deal. So maybe something like that. And I'd like to kind of tuck one in behind here as well. And what that will let us do is means we can get a bit of contrast in here too. So maybe it's just hanging a little bit lower and we'll bring that out there. And then we can tuck this in behind. Maybe it disappears in behind this one. So basically just get your two triangles on the go and then have your petals coming out and they've got quite a, what I call a frilly edge on them. So you can just make that a nice wavy line and that can disappear up in behind there. And see, there's going to be this part in the middle because obviously these petals go all the way around. And then we've got the capsule at the top where they actually come out. So we'll put, make sure we put that in there as well. And that is really it for the sketching. That's like, that is all you need to do. So when we think about the colours, we're going to need a, a very delicate pink. And that kind of fades into this yellowish, even sort of greenish as well. So that's the basic colours that we're looking at. So to start with, I'm going to use my number six. I'm just going to wet the paper down to where my first petal's poking up and then I'm going to grab a tiny spot of sap green and I'm going to add that in at the top there. And then I'm going to jump straight into cadmium yellow, so that's like a warm yellow. And I'm going to bring that all the way down to where that petal's sticking up and I'm just going to let those do their thing. And for the petal colour, we want to mix up this sort of very delicate pink almost into coral colour. And the best way to do that, if I just pull my palette down here, if you have a colour like a magenta or a rose madder hue, which is a, a sort of paler pink colour. So this is the rose madder hue, which is the one I've chosen. But if you, if you have that sort of magenta colour, that'll be absolutely fine. And what we're going to do is we're just going to mix a tiny bit of cadmium orange in with it. So we're leaning away from that pink colour more towards yellow and that's what's going to give us that slightly corally colour. It might take you a couple of attempts to get it right but if you test it out on a scrap of paper first you will get there just by mixing those two colours. So for the for the back part of my petals here I'm just going to put a very pale layer of this down so I'm taking some of my mixed paint which I've got in here and that looks very red on the camera but I can actually see the orange tint in it and we can just pop that in there. And any other sections that we feel that are going to be quite dark, you know, this has dried off a little bit up here. It's not completely dry, we don't want it to be completely dry, but I'm just going to take the, the cadmium yellow on its own here. And we just want to run that down. Picking up a bit of the green, but not too much. And then blend this out to almost nothing with just a wet brush. Now while that part's drying we can work on our flower that's in behind. So obviously we're going with the same idea that's up here but I'm going to employ more of the green and kind of almost use that as a shadow colour because it's tucked in behind. We'll just start with an outline there and I'm going to bring this right down here because I'm going to have like a vein there that just happens to be a little bit more green. And again grabbing my cadmium yellow. Blending that in there. And while that's still wet then I can grab my nice... I'm calling it a coral colour, it's not even a coral colour. Verging into pink really, isn't it? And while that's wet, I'm just going to pull that right down over the whole area. So it's blending in with the yellow I've already done while it's still wet. So a nice wet and wet technique there. And with this same dilution, which you can see is a lot paler, I'm going to head in here. Now that my other areas are a bit drier. And I'm going to flick this up. And then we have this last section here of, of the, 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 front, the front trumpet, oh my goodness. And I'm just going to do the same thing again, using the same colours. This is slightly damp, it's not wet, but it's slightly damp. So I'm going to start with my green up at the top here. And just pull that down there. And then pick up some yellow. And while that's still wet, same thing again. And notice I'm pulling the coral colour up into the yellow, not the other way round. And that is the basis for our trumpets. That's us got our background colour sorted out. So what we just need to do now is wait for this to dry. And then we'll go in with our number two brush and we'll start putting in the detail. And of course, that's where the fun is. All right, so my background flower is completely dry. And it is important that these are totally dry before you start on this. Because this is where we're going to put detail in. And it's quite important 
that nothing starts to spread out or bleed. So you do the old finger tap test to make sure. So this one for me is still wet, but the one underneath isn't. So we want to take our number two brush, make sure it's damp and just pick up paint straight out the palette. So I've got my sap green here and I'm starting to define lines. So this is the pod where the flower has emerged from. So we'll put that in first. So not a lot of water on my brush here, pretty damp brush. And I just want to fill that in and give myself some definition. And then with the, the residual paint that's on the brush, we can add a little bit of water to that. And I want to add in some of these veins here. So I'm following my pencil lines. Now this is where things get interesting because we're going back to our coral colour and we want to start adding in these layers on top and this is to show us that there's crinkles going on. So as I'm pulling this paint up, I'm thinking about these creases and where they're sitting. Now this part, I've got like a fold in this one, so this is going to be quite dark because it's almost the inside of the petal. And while that's still damp, I'm going to go back into my paint palette here and I'm picking up the Rose Madder, which is the pink colour. So again, if you're using another palette, your magenta colour. And just at the very edges here, I'm going to add in a little bit of this in where I think the darker places are. So again, in this crease here. And I'm just going to let that paint bleed into what's there while it's still wet. So the same thing on the front flower. Start with my sap green. And bring these lines down. I want to add in a little bit more yellow in certain sections here, especially as we get up to the top. And again, just flicking that down. And that's just to mimic the sort of channels of the sides of this flower. I'm going to build up some more green at the top here too. Okay, so moving down here, pick up the rose madder. I'm going to make this a bit bolder and then just spread it out. And then this part that's in behind here is going to be much darker. Then just with a, a damp brush, you can start moving this about a bit. Just soften those edges a wee bit and maybe pull some of it in here. Back to my original color, cor color, coral color here. And just build up another layer of this. Just let that slip up into the yellow. And we can do the same on our background flower now as well. Build up the color intensity. I do want this to be quite delicate, but they are such nice colors. You know, we don't we don't want to have a wishy washy water wishy washy water colour because that's not that's not what we're about. So there we go, just take that up and you can see I'm flicking that up and then all I'm gonna do is damp clean brush again. Just spread that out a little bit. I want to tidy up some of these edges a little bit. And then my part back to the same rule and parts that are tucked in behind. A little bit of my, my rose madder in there. I can come up to my green capsule at the top here, so this is very much undiluted sap green. Okay, now for a shadow colour, just to give us, because we're kind of like swimming in mid-tones here, it's something I talk about quite often. To make a, to make a darker variety of what we're doing to use as a shadow colour, my preferred Payne's Grey or Indigo is quite a good colour as well. So Payne's Grey is a grey that has got a bluish tint to it. And again, if I just show you on here, this is Payne's Grey here, so you can see in its diluted form, it's quite delicate and obviously the indigo next door is a little bit bluer again. So either of those two colours would be absolutely fine. I wouldn't use black because that can muddy things up fairly quickly. Um, that's that's usually not, not a good thing to do. <laughs> you, may, you might not want to do that. Uh, but I always put this in a separate pan because it is a very, very strong colour. And I like to just squish it out as I do. All very technical. And just with a pipette really dilute it down and then once I've stuck some water in it I like to test it out on a scrap of paper to make sure I'm happy that it is going to be delicate enough and it's not going to take away from the colours that I've already got. So once again wait until this is absolutely perfectly dry and with my number two brush I'm just going to go into my Payne's Grey and I'm thinking about this capsule area. I'm just going to stick in little crease and add in some shadow there. So you can see it's adding a tiny little bit of definition, but it doesn't look as if I painted on a gray line basically, which is what we're aiming for. And then down this entire side here, just want to bring that down there and then let that spread out slightly. And again, with a clean brush, clean damp brush, just want to spread that out to almost nothing there. So then we can start thinking about our creases here. 
Now, if this this one may be cast in a shadow on this one, there is every possibility of that. So I might take a line down here. Now, this is really sort of down to your discretion, whether or not you want to, to you know, go down this route. But it's up to yourself. But I'm just going to add in a few little accents here and there. Now, this middle section here I said was the folded over section. I'm going to fill that in because that's going to be sort of deep in. And then the same on the front one here. Just looking for those darker sections. Just adding that into what's already there. So that would be your your um, your pink sections where you actually used your, your pink paint. So we're just giving that illusion that there are crinkles in the actual flower itself. Maybe a, a few more braver ones here. And there we go. So that's a, that's a fairly simple little flower. And it's just something you can practice in your sketchbook. So there we have it. Two nice and neat and fun little exercises in painting pretty flowers. I hope you have enjoyed this today and it's maybe inspired you to go and find your own exotic flowers to paint. I just love this as a quick exercise and just to be able to enjoy watercolour as I said when I, you know I don't have a lot of time. So if any of you are going to try this you can always tag me on Instagram and I would love to see any pretty quick watercolour flowers that you decided to paint. Thank you very much for watching everyone. Take care of each other, stay safe, bye bye for now.